Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of your students. Uh, this is Assistant Professor Ishani Trivedi uh, from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology continuing with the session regarding the subject Construction Equipment and Automation. Okay students, so previously we have been discussing about the tractors, bulldozers, rippers and scrapers, right? These were the basic equipment used for general purpose construction activity. Now today we are going to move forward with the specific type of equipment that is excavating equipment. Today we are specifically going to talk about various type of equipment which are used which will be ultimately mounted on the tractor itself. It can be wheel mounted, it can be crawler mounted but the work which has to be done over here depending on various site conditions, depending on various types of soil, depending on various types of altitude, on types of topography, right? We have different type of excavating equipment which are used around the world in the market. So, what are the major type of excavating equipment? We have five different types of major excavating equipment. The first over here is a power shovel, right? First we have is power shovel. Now you know what is a shovel, right? If you are, if you have dealt with the concrete mixing process, if you, have, if you have done with the hand mixing process, then you have operated a shovel, right? Uh, it will be a hand operated manual shovel, which will be having a wooden rod and the shovel blade will be attached to it, which is used for mixing purpose by hand. So, when you convert this type of small equipment into a bigger one which will be mechanically operated which will also be having sharp teeth and blades at the bottom then it becomes your power shovel, right? The image you can see over here, it is flashing right in front of you. First I am going to show you images, pictures of all the type of excavating equipment and then we will discuss one by one in detail. So, the first you have is power shovel. Now, second, second which do we have? We have drag lines. The name here is drag lines. Now, can you see it is again a tractor mounted? Yes, we can see that. But you can also see instead of an arm, instead of an arm having the bucket or having the excavating equipment, here a crane is used. A crane and a rope and a pulley is used and there your blade is mounted and this is how it works and this type of equipment is known as drag line. Next equipment we have is hose. You can also call it as back hole loader. You can also call it as front end hole loader, right? Now, here what is meant by a hoe? Meaning, it is the type of excavating equipment which will also have an excavating bucket at front, right? It will be in U shape and it will also be performing simultaneously collection work. So, it can be front end loader, it can be back end loader, but the equipment is such that it will perform two works simultaneously. It will perform the excavation work and together you also have a dozer blade in front, right? You can see over here you have a dozer blade in front. The dozer blade can be attached at back and the excavator can be at the front also, vice versa. So, with the work of excavation, the collection of material will also be done. Those are known as holes. Next we have is clamshells, right? We have the next excavating equipment, clamshells. Now, clamshell meaning the bucket. The bucket is kind of different in shape. In all of these excavating equipment, the differences will be only in the type of the buckets, type of the excavating blades. Otherwise, it is same. So, in the clamshell, we will have two buckets, right? It will be fitted such that uh, it will be uh, in semicircle, both of them, and it is going to collect your soil sample in this manner. And that type of equipment is known as a clamshell. This is generally used for diaphragm wall. Uh, when you want to construct a diaphragm wall for excavation purpose, you can always use clamshell. Next, we have is trenching machines. Trenching machine means foundation trench laying equipment. If you want to carry out the excavation specifically to lay the foundation trenches, then you can see over here, you can see it is a full uh, circular blade 
mounted with sharp edges and as it will move in the soil you can lay the trenches inside the soil that is your foundation trenches these are the five type of excavating equipment most important for us now today we are going to start with the first equipment the most basic one and the most important one that is your power shovel we have power shovel now you already saw what is a power shovel students so let us first discuss the basic points and then i will move forward in depth we are talking about various performances of power shovel so definition these are used primarily to excavate the earth and load it into the tractor right once the excavation work is done with the help of power shovel where will that soil go where will that soil in the bucket go you will have to load it in the tractors and trucks and wagons and then you can take it off from the site right so for trucks or belt conveyors you can use any type of conveying equipment and are capable of excavating all types of earth except rock you cannot perform uh, for the soil where rocks are present otherwise this is a universal equipment for all types of soil next the size of the shovel is indicated by the size of the dipper expressed in cubic meters right i am going to talk about the various part along with the cross sectional diagram also but right now you have to understand that the bucket the bucket is called dipper so the size depends on the size of the dipper next power shovels are available in sizes of 0.5 meter cube to 5 meter cube right this is the volume this is the size of the uh, your bucket or your dipper here instead of bucket we are going to call it as a dipper next the bank measure volume now students in the very starting i had discussed three definitions loose volume bank volume and disturbed volume if you remember we have discussed about three terms that is repeating over here i had said that you have to remember because i'll be using it in various equipment so here the bank measure volume that is loosened volume of a dipper is less than loose volume of the soil due to swelling in loose state see we have also discussed about swelling and shrinkage we had talked that uh, when the soil is in undisturbed condition it will be original volume when you excavate it it will be disturbed it will be swelled and then it will be your bank measure volume and once you will put it back you will compact it then again another volume will be derived we have talked about this already students if you do not know about these terms then again watch the lectures regarding the technical definitions so if i want to calculate the bank measure volume then for example let us say that the size of the bucket or the dipper is 5 meter cube and the soil which we are dealing with is going to undergo 25 percentage of swelling we have determined the physical properties of the soil so if i want to calculate the bank measure volume then i can divide 5 divide by 1 plus 0.25 percentage that is so 4 meter cube will be the bank measure volume you have to study uh, the lecture regarding the definitions to understand these terms uh, you are supposed to remember when we are talking about this now applications what are the major applications of a power shovel so we have over here is for excavation above its own track or wheel level meaning you can perform the excavation only on the surface you cannot go inside the soil you cannot excavate the soil you cannot make huge depth of the soil you can just excavate on the top surface right in case of clam shells you can excavate up to very much greater depth so here comes the difference next it is used for cutting the soil and loading the soil and transporting it uh, it is suitable for heavy cutting in all types of dry soil okay this is uh, uh, i think i already mentioned this now we have is basic parts and operation of a power shovel students please mark that you are supposed to draw the sketch if it is asked which is right in front of you so let us try to talk about the various parts so the first part i'm i'm giving you a more clearer picture uh, it has even more parts which may not be included over here in your books as well so first we have is mounting then we have a cab we have boom we have dipper stick we have hoist line and a dipper now students look at the left most image at the bottom in the corner so first we can see is we are going to start with the cab cab means the operating cabin where the operator is going to sit and operate the power shovel next we have is mounting that will be at the bottom it will be either wheel mounting or crawler mounting 
next we have is let us see the hoist line okay now here the power shovel which we have is cable controlled it can be hydraulic control it can be cable controlled right so here we are going to have is a hoist line and from that will be suspended it will be connected to the bucket or the dipper right now here the bucket is going to be called as dipper the dipper will be having a stick which will be attached to your hoist line that stick is known as dipper stick and the arm and the arm will be known as boom right these are the various parts of a power shovel so how this works so first of all the power shovel will be taken into right position into correct position uh, at the angle where you want to carry out the excavation work so it will be on the surface of the earth where it has to be excavated now the bucket or the dipper of the shovel will be lowered right it will be hydraulic or either cable operated and the arm that is the boom will be lowered and the teeth of the dipper that is the sharp blades of the dipper will be pointing towards the face of the cabin it will be pointing towards the face of the cabin meaning if i am operating it from over here right if i am operating from here this is my operating equipment then uh, from the cabin i will have the arm such that it will be facing towards me it will be facing towards the one which is operating right next it says a crowding force is applied the force which is applied with the help of the arm with the help of traction which is generated to the dipper right that force is crowding force will be generated it will be with the help of hydraulic pressure the cylinder the hydraulic cylinder which will be present inside the engine see this is all mechanical part right uh, the automobile part so the force will be exerted to the stick the boom stick right and at the same time tension is applied to the hoisting line at the same time tension is applied to the hoisting line and the excavation work will be done the soil sample will be collected in the dipper this is how simultaneously the boom stick and the hoist line works the material left near the floor of the pit right will be excavated after the upper portion of the face is removed meaning when you remove the soil when you excavate the soil there will be some parts of soil which will fall down at the bottom so later on that also can be excavated in the next uh, round where you take off the dipper this is how your power shovel works now students here there will be a major problem of abrasion right because the dipper because the blades because it is made up of sharp edges uh, as you use it more and more as you give it more and more crowding force as you uh, excavate the soil more and more it is going to uh, it is going to experience abrasion very much right so for those cases you will have to replace the dipper as and when it is required because of the abrasion now next we are going to talk about optimum depth of the pit or the cut how much depth can be cut for one time excavation of the dipper right we are going to talk about minimum how much depth can be cut with the help of the dipper of the power shovel now if i want to technically define this then the depth which produces the greatest output the depth which produces the greatest output and at which the bucket of the shovel comes up with the full load meaning once you are inserting the dipper once you are inserting the power shovel dipper into the ground then the depth at which how much depth it is going to take it off so uh, meaning it tries to say that for one collection of one full collection right when the soil loading becomes full inside the dipper so the depth which produces the greatest output meaning that when you achieve maximum meaning full loading of the dipper that particular how much depth it is cutting when you get the maximum output when you get the full loading of the bucket without any undue crowding meaning it is a a full load capacity where forcefully you are not filling up more soil right it is the standard capacity at which full load is achieved right that depth at which the cut is performed that will be your optimum depth of the cut right so when you get the maximum output for one 
uh, one blow for one removal of soil at full loading right when you get the maximum output that depth that particular depth of cut will be your optimum depth of cut right uh, you can see in the image which is flashing over here can you see it is fully loaded right now this collection this collection of full load of soil without any overcrowding now the depth at which this cut will be performed that particular depth is known as optimum depth of the cut now what are the conditions to be satisfied when you want to operate a power shovel so there should be a large open pit you cannot just directly go on the surface and start excavating you will have to dig a pit for collection of the soil for collection because the power shovel does not have the capacity to dig a pit it can just collect from the surface next the floor must be well drained you cannot deal with the uh, site condition soil conditions with, which is very much wet so with the help of necessary pumping equipment you will have to well drain the soil the hauling road the road on which it is moving must not be affected by climatic conditions uh, meaning moisture or rainfall or temperature it has to be normal dry soil right the main condition is you have to operate it in the dry soil next the trucks must be standing on both sides of a power shovel in case of any failure occurs then trucks must be standing on both the sides also for the loading right why do you need trucks now the major purpose why you require trucks over here is because during excavation once the bucket is uh, uh, cutting the soil and collecting the soil full load it will directly put it into the into the truck which will be right near it on the sides that is why you require the truck next angle of swing the angle of swing should be 90 degrees right you can you will be able to perform angle of swing 90 uh, required boom angle right the boom stick the boom angle must be maintained for specified soil the depth of the cut must be optimum i think we discussed in detail about the optimum depth of cut already now we are going to talk about the output of a power shovel right for all types of equipment please remember that we have to study first definition the concept regarding the equipment second the cross sectional diagram and the various parts attached to it and the third performance and output and factors affecting the equipment these three will be the standard theories related to any kind of equipment which we are going to study uh, from today onwards right so now next we are going to talk about the output of a power shovel if you want to calculate what will be the output with the help of the power shovel how much you will be able to get the efficiency then volume of excavated material but divide by t multiplied by n what is t it is the time taken to complete one cycle of excavation in hours right for one cycle of excavation you, you are going to take time taken and n will be the number of such cycles in one hour right so based on this you can calculate the output of a power shovel now output will also depend on certain factors not just power shovel for every equipment the output depends on various factors i already said previously that operator skill also matters in all type of equipment so that is ultimately here one of the factors also the type of the job what type of job you are performing meaning what is the capacity of the area what is the type of soil you are dealing with what is the uh, quantity of the work which you want so that is your job condition there are certain factors from this which will be common for all type of equipment when we are talking about its output so first we have this class of material right we already know that you can perform this uh, power shovel on dry soil you cannot perform this when you are dealing with the soil which is having rocks you can not deal sometimes with also having mud or clay soil otherwise in all types of dry soil you can perform next height of the cut optimum depth right we already discussed about the optimum depth of the cut so it completely depends that what optimum depth you get based on one strike with full loading so height of the cut is important next angle of swing i already said that the angle of swing for the boom stick should be 90 degrees right so it is important that it, you should be able to move it at 90 degrees otherwise there will be a problem 
Next, operator skill. You require always skilled operator to perform the various actions and to operate this type of equipment. You cannot just employ any or uh, any laborer in this. So you require a skilled operator. Job condition, which I already discussed, that it depends on what type of job you are performing, whether you are performing excavation for foundation or excavation for clearing the site area. It depends on what type of and what quantity of job you want to perform. Management conditions. I think this is common for every. Uh, type of construction project in the site it depends on how you are managing the work managing the conditions and systematic timely completion of work size of hauling units meaning the units the trucks specifically the hauling units are trucks what is its size at a time when you are performing excavation with the help of power shovel you are going to require truck beside you so what is the size of that truck at a time how much can it carry it depends the output depends on that also physical condition of shovel i say that the shovel blades are already uh, going to uh, exert they are already going to experience abrasion when you use it frequently so it depends on what is the physical condition of the shovel at that present moment Hall unit exchange, meaning when the trucks take the uh, the full load of the soil, which is done by the power shovel, then it has to dump it and it has to come back. So, what is the exchange rate? How fast it can be performed? Faster the work can be done, more will be the output of your power shovel. Clean up of loading area, right? The area where you are. Performing this excavation work, you will have to perform the cleanup as well afterwards, and then your work will be completed. So this is how there are various factors which will affect the efficiency and the output of a power shovel. Okay, students. So uh, we'll be continuing with other type of equipment in next session. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.